Welcome to this episode of the Courage Coaching and Counseling Podcast. And my guest uh, today is a very special guest, uh, John Lynch. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, my friend. What a treat. I've been looking forward to this podcast for a long time. Thank you. The, um, in case we have any technical difficulties and, and uh, the internet blows up and we lose audio, the first thing I want to say is, is just thank you, John. Uh, your, uh, your books um, mm. have, have changed uh, my life, the, mm. the trajectory mm. of, of my life. Um, it revolutionized uh, uh, my faith and um, it made a huge difference in in my family uh, um, and the my um my uh some people might think Brene Brown's TED Talks and her book Daring Greatly is like the the thing that I I assign most for homework with counseling clients but over the years your book True Faced and your videos the the two roads message uh, that, that, that is my clients know that that is the, the thing they're that they're eventually going to get that assignment. Yeah. They're going to get that assignment. Um, because it makes all the difference, just like your, your book, uh, the subtitle of your, your, your book, uh, on my worst day that, the, um, uh, the narrative changes when redemption enters in. That's right. That's right. And, uh, I, I want to, uh, Pick your brain and your heart uh, today uh, about that. It just that. blows my mind when I hear that, that, that these old dogs got to have that run of influence and still do. Bill Thrall is still my big brother in the faith and my hero. And I got to write with him and Bruce McNichol saying he's, he's still vitally getting to minister. Uh, I'll play golf with Bill on Monday. Uh, so we just are dearest and dearest of friends so the privilege to get to write with them and then write on my own for on my worst day uh, just just can't believe uh, the impact and and the gift of God in that it has been it, it, the cure right now is probably selling more copies than it has ever sold and it's been out mm -hmm. for 10 12 years so mm -hmm. thanks I, I, and to hear that your life has been impacted in some way just blows me away. The um for for listeners that aren't familiar uh with with the cure or or, or true face, could you share a, a little bit, uh, John, about what what's uh, uh sparked uh, you, your writing uh, that that book? Yeah, there there I think our passion all the way through is how do we communicate? Um, that we're not just these saved sinners who are trying to be better to please a God who's kind of semi-disgusted with them. We're going to go to heaven, but he's not that pleased with us and nothing we can do can please us enough. So we wanted to try to say, that's not true. This God created you before the world began and he wanted the exact you at this time for a particular group of people. And he's crazy in love with you. And what happened is not you just got saved and go to heaven. Something un almost unspeakable happened to us. We got a new heart. Not, not just sort of the Holy Spirit, Christ living in us. And so our identity, our name, everything you'll hear in, in this podcast even my shame identity that I thought was who I was forever. Mm -hmm. He took care of that, Hebrews 12, at the cross. He, he, he is now fused with me, and I can't tell where he leaves off and I start up. And living out of communities that believe that that has happened and that we don't have to perform for God, but at my very essence now, my very essence doesn't want to get away with anything. And I most, my very essence most wants to love. It's, it blows me away. It still blows me away. So how do I get that message out to communities that have been um, almost 
in their religiosity have become for people um, anesthetizing or it's caused them to rebel. Yeah. It, and, and it keeps them from experiencing that wonder that's in them. So everything we've written, the cure, Bose Cafe, uh, the cure in parents, the, the cure devotional uh, on my worst day, all those books have at their core, how do we get that truth out and let it run wild? Yeah. So, so many of the, the counseling clients that, that I, I work with, uh, especially uh, Christians or, or, or folks that grew up uh, in the church, they, they've heard that, that God loves them and that, that, that they've been made new. But they wrestle with, with anxiety and depression. Um, they, and they struggle with uh, unwanted sexual behavior. Yes. And the idea that like that, that my deepest self it, it loves, they, they're wrestling with desires that, that distort that identity, that, That's right. that, that confuse them. And so much of, uh, I, I, I shared this uh, about a month ago, so much of the Christian experience and, and walk for a lot of people is just walking around feeling like they're faking it and that they're just struggling with imposter syndrome. It, it, and that's a great name for it too. It takes, doesn't it, um, a community. I have to have some place, in fact, we talk about it a lot in the control cycle, in the cure, saying um, this, this struggle with sin or what I'm doing wrong, it gets broken in its very cycle. If, if I just have a place where I can tell the truth about myself and tell the sin that I'm intending to do, in that moment, it breaks its power. So for me, even to have the freedom to say, to have someone to call and say, I feel like a phony. I feel like I'm bluffing. I'm in the, uh, what, what statement? Uh, we make one of these statements way back in the true face. The more influence we have, the more we're tempted to hide our real true self for fear that we're going to lose that influence. Mm. And so in a lot of communities, that's a real thing. So even our leaders in our communities have to be teaching that we're longing for the real you to come out because it will create something so magnificent. And if the real you comes out, we'll stand with you in the consequences of what that means. Mm -hmm. that, that starts to, um, if I can for just a second, one day in a message, several years ago now, I asked people, how long did it take for them to feel safe at, at Open Door, mm -hmm. the, the local church that I've been part of for all these years? And I don't even know why I asked it. It wasn't in my notes. I just said, mm -hmm. how long did it take before you felt safe in this community? I said, maybe not a fair question, but but I, I, I'd like to know, was it like two and a half years? And maybe for some of you, it hasn't happened yet. Mm. And I said, how, how, how about that? Uh, did it take two years? Raise your hand, just raise your hand. And nobody raised their hand. And I said, okay, like a year and a half, a, a, a year, nobody raised their hand. Um, I got down to three months and nobody raised their hand. And I said, are you guys not hearing what I'm asking? I'm asking you to raise your hand at that time. I got down to five minutes or less and everybody that I could see in that room raised their hand. Is that crazy? What they were saying, they could walk in the room hmm. and experience something palpable and tangible because there was a group of authentic, failed, messed up, goofed up, leaders hmm. who had risk in trusting themselves to each other. It, trusting God and themselves to each other. And it created hmm. 
a community. Now, it hasn't always been that way. I just want to make sure we, we just went through a rough season two or three years ago. But at that moment, everybody I could see in the room raised their hands. And what is that about? Nobody in there was trying to please me and, hey, let's get, score some points. They, they, I couldn't even see all the hands. Isn't that stunning? What a gift that is mm. in our community for such a person who's an imposter. Uh, Brennan Manning used to use that term so well, an imposter and a syndrome because they they're afraid if the real me is known i'm going to lose my seat at the table i'm going to get thrown under the bus i'm going to be shamed and i'm going to lose my role um this is a true story that that i told in the the movie the heart of man which which uh silvana i, I I think is is one of the very best movies on uh, sexual, it, it, all manners of brokenness yeah. because it doesn't approach it from a, uh, come on now, let's get out there and man up and, and and let's do better. We can, after what Jesus has done for us, it really has a love of the father, allowing the father to love us and a beautiful grace and identity perspective that blows me away. It, it's so, you know, it's so powerful, uh, yeah. John, and and I loved seeing you uh, in it. Um, and and I I recommend and invite clients and friends to to watch that movie. It's still on Amazon Prime, uh, and so folks can watch it there. It on Netflix for a while, but so powerful. Yeah, in in that movie, I talk about in fifth grade, I got violated in, in a box car. Uh, sexually violated and I walked out of that box car going no 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 this can't have happened this didn't happen I'm just an innocent jock kid I just don't don't even know what just happened what was I I could and I made that quick decision I will never tell anyone no one will ever know and I'll be okay I'll just be able to forget it I'll just be able to go on and I tried I just didn't think anyone could handle me I, I th didn't know what would happen if I told my parents that. What would happen to me? So I just shut it down and said, and, and I'm a kid. I, I, I have no idea, nobody around me to tell me that this is going to distort my very life, mm -hmm. th that moment that happened to me. So, so I didn't tell anyone through junior high. I didn't tell anyone through high school, not through college, dating girls all the way through this. Never told anyone for fear at that thing that happened that I didn't even choose, right. that people would hate me, that they would go away from me, that they, I would lose them. So I become a Christian, still don't tell anyone. And I become married to my wife, Stacy, still don't tell anyone because I'm afraid of the consequence. I'll lose my job. Stacy will be so disgusted with me that she'll leave me. Mm. And one day we were doing a, a, up outside of Seattle, we were doing a conference and Bill and I were out walking during the break. And for some reason, the thing I had never even hinted at before, I just blurted out. And I was so underwhelmed at his response. <laughs> I mean, I thought he was going to have to say, well, John, this is it. Then you can't be you, part you, of You were terrified. I was terrified, but for some reason, I couldn't hide it anymore. Every camp I went to, everything I did, I felt like people could see, that they could tell that I wore it. I just wanted to be free so much that I think God just said, let's blurt this thing out. And Bill just said, that breaks my heart. And I'll stand with you in whatever that means from this point on, John. Thank you for giving me that gift. And he said, uh, we got to go back in, break's over. And I said, that's it? I, I've been faking it this long for that? You know, come on. Same thing with Stacy. He just said, I love you so much. I'm so sorry that happened. And what do you want for dinner? It was incredible, the freedom. And now I can't stop talking about it. Mm -hmm. But the freedom 
Now, st I, I, I still carry stuff from that happening. I know it, it gets revealed all the, all the time. But the freedom in this man to have those two people that I trusted enough who had earned my trust, that I just let them know me. I, I, I was a chameleon. I was an imposter extraordinaire. I was an actor, someone who could be this person over here and this person here. Mm. And, I, and I could hide this reality that I was carrying all the time. I was brilliant at it, but it was beating me up. It was wearing me down. Mm. I'm as free as I've ever been in my life now. And I hate that it took me that long, uh, that I was that strong in an unhealthy way that I could hold on to that for so long. And anyone who's listening, the gift to have a friend who won't throw you under the bus it is gold. It's everything. And it's even to have a counselor or a therapist who you can entrust to get those words out, those hidden words, because hiddenness, as you teach all the time, is the toxin. It's, it's what makes us sick. It's, it's having these things that we're hiding it's like a petri dish for all manner of failure. So um, I, I have the temptation as, as I move up in influence or have moved up in influence in my life mm -hmm. to hide certain things. And, and I think I wrote on my worst day, partly to say, I, I want you to know everything. I don't want anything to be hidden. And I want, it, I want to have to have it own me for the rest of my life. And it, what a gift to have that out. In fact, I, I got to write the revision to it. So I got to add some more of that stuff. But I also want people to know by writing that. that people say, oh, what a hero you are that you could da 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 da. No, that's the normative life. This is. Not everybody gets to write a book about it, but everybody, um, to be honest and vulnerable and authentic about your lives, that, that's the normal Christian life. That's not an absurdly uh, unique life. It ought to be what pastors and ministers and uh, caregivers and counselors and parents and friends we ought to be trusted because we are authentic. Yeah. 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 And, and e e even just this week, you, you're, you're helping me, me do that. Cause um, this podcast is about being courageous. Yes. And there's moments where uh, I, I feel so like anxious and such a beginner at, at this. And I'm thinking like, yeah, the, the, who am I? To, to be uh, interviewing uh, John Lynch, one of my heroes today. But mm -hmm. then I, but your words reminded me and uh, like, but, but of course. That's right. You know, be, that's because that, that's what you've taught me is to be brave enough to ask you to talk with me. Absolutely. And, you know? and, 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 and to be brave enough to admit that here in the podcast is it's freeing to so many people instead of you just being slick and tight and on your game. And uh, it, it, all that does is uh, we are all created with limitations, all of us. And if I can let you love me in those limitations, I get loved. If I can let you meet my needs in those limitations, then I get loved. Otherwise, I may I may impress you and look slick, but all I'll get from you is your being impressed with me. I don't get loved. It's why we talk about those masks. When, when I'm wearing a mask that says, I'm together, now love me, please love me. 
because look at me, I'm worthy of love now. The truth is only my mask gets love. It, uh, I have been convinced over the years that not everybody, nobody of the DMV cares what I'm thinking, but there are, there have been dozens and dozens of people who when I tell them the worst about me, they, it's like they've been waiting for it. They're, they're geared to know me in that, that when we make the statement, all of us are awakening to the pain of realizing I can't control my world the way I thought I could. And I'm stuck with unresolved issues whose symptoms I'm trying to fix all without the help of anybody else. And so we, we answered, what do you do with that? And we, we made the statement, what if there was a place in my marriage, in my family, in my church, in my small groups, in my counseling setting, what if there was a place so safe that the worst of me could be known and I would discover that I would be loved more, not less in the telling of it? Oh. The, and the answer is, my unresolved issues would begin to heal. Yes. So that, what a, what a that's gift the, we have yeah. to offer. Yeah, that, that, that's the freedom. Amen. That's the, the the relief that you felt with Bill, like mm -hmm. being able to, sh to to just blurt it out. Um, and it's such a, a privilege uh, uh, in the counseling room to to, to hear uh, the, the story, the stories uh, that folks have been carrying around for all their lives. Um, I was I was moved earlier when you said uh, your your church open door that everyone felt safe so quickly because I, I hear the, I hear the painful part so much, John, and, and you can just see it all over Twitter um, and, and just in the news uh, that, that so many people do not feel safe uh, in, in their churches, in their families, in their relationships. Yeah. And it, it's just <laughs> such a desire. Um, uh, to, to, for you know part partly the, one of the reasons why i want to do the podcast is um for 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 people to feel safe uh to to, to have the wisdom to know what is safe like what is a safe relationship that's right that's right because there there is abuse out there and there are those who will mishandle vulnerability and so i've carefully um and, and it starts out small sometimes you're the first person on the beach but i know in my own marriage with stacy she had been trying to earn my trust because she knew that i had hidden stuff in there that i didn't tell anyone mm. and I, I i tell that story um when the cure was first coming out as a beautiful story. So I'll, I'll tell it. it extrapolates out to kids and any other place too. But I was the writer of it. Now, Bill gave wisdom to it. Bruce gave wisdom to it, but I had to write the characters and the story and the, the whole piece. Well, we had these indifferent uh, critiquers that we asked, just dozens of them uh, from some Christian, some not Christian. And we sat around as a staff and before the book was going to be published, this was like the 11th hour. And this one guy, I, I was reading all the cards, doing a good job. And this one guy said, um, I really like the wisdom in the book, but the book is so poorly written. Whoever wrote this book should go to writing classes and then promise society that he will never write again. And I read that and I got through with the meeting. I went back to my office and started, got by myself and started doing that shame thing, that churning of, see, see, this is what I do. I ruin things. I, uh, this book's going to be ruined because of me. It should have been somebody else. And I, of course, I had to do the characters. That, what, what am I thinking? Ooh, I, all of my shame, all of, back all, back in Little League, I did this. And, mm -hmm. 
And suddenly I got a phone call from Stacy. Now I had never told my wife the deep embarrassment of my heart when I got embarrassed. I would just go on. Why would you tell your wife? She's already not sure she made a good choice. You know? And so I, for whatever reason on that day, she called me and said, so um, well, what, do you, what do you want for dinner? I'm, I'm, I just want to call and see when you're coming home. And for whatever reason, I said, Stacy, I just got hurt. I got beaten up. This guy, he wrote this card. It was so mean. And, it, and I don't know what to do. I'm all, he, he says the book isn't good. He says I ruined it. And, and I feel like a failure. And, and my wife, if you, she had been waiting for this moment. For decades of marriage, she had been waiting for me to do this to give her permission to love me. Most, most spouses, they wait their entire marriage mm. to get permission to love the other. And meanwhile, we're just thinking I'm supposed to keep it together to love her. So in that moment, all that she had done finally won out. And, and she knew she, this was that moment. And I said, and she said, so, um, and this is pure Stacy. She said, well, I always told you that you were a better speaker than a writer. <laughs> and I said, well, thanks so much. Thank you. I love, uh, she, well, bless your heart. Um, glad I shared that. And then she said, but maybe if this guy knew that you live out these truths in our marriage, and then I don't know anybody who knows how to live out of that better. Maybe he wouldn't have said those things. John, I've, I've read this. I, I've read this manuscript. It's going to change the hearts of many, many people. I'm so proud of you. Now, now come home. Um, I've got your favorite meal being prepared. There, there's twinkle lights going on up in the patio. I've got the fire going, your favorite wine. And when you come home, I will kiss you like a rabbit on shore leaf. Now come home. Now, historically, what would happen with embarrassment, I could only take it so long. And then I wouldn't even know that I was doing it, but someone would get hurt. And I, either I'd pick a fight with Stacy, uh, with the kids or at the elders meeting. That's what embarrassment does. You can't stay embarrassed. And so Stacy, part of what she was doing was self-preservation. It's like, I'm tired of my husband not knowing why he comes home and picks a fight. So that day I came home and she indeed did kiss me at the front porch like a rabbit on shore leave. And I came in in the backyard and there was the food and there was the wine and there were the twinkle lights and the fire. And, and I think the beautiful thing for me to say is I, I was still fragile. It was still, it was still hard for me to have heard those things from that person. Mm -hmm. But nobody got hurt that night. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Something something happened in the Lynch family line where, where that pattern of embarrassment leading to whatever, somebody got in and got to break that pattern by me trusting their love and they got to protect me. And I, with kids, I've had the privilege of doing that with each of my kids to earn the right. See, anybody can give you information, but only trust allows me to influence, to give wisdom, to give insight, to give discernment. That, that, it's, it's a crazy statement, but I, I've had to earn that with my children, just like God earns it with us, even though, what does he have to earn? But he knows until I actually trust him, nothing real is going to happen. So, so that's, that's what has to happen. It, if I do not love, if I do not trust you, I will not receive your love. 
no matter how much love you have for me. And so we, we get to play this beautiful role on this side, the mature ones, Paul calls us in, in Galatians 6 two. we get to be the ones who earn trust so we can get behind the wire. Um, I always say all the books are written on how to stop you in the behavior. But, but way back here, we make the decision. And there's all these self-entitlement statements that are going on that, that if nobody ever gets to them, they just run unchecked. Um, here's one. God, I think you are more powerful. Uh, no, I think the sin's more powerful than you are, God. It has always won. It's going to win again today. Now, that's an unchecked... Um, permission statement, self-entitlement statement. God, I think this sin is more attractive than you are, more desirable than you are. That's another, until someone gets permission to hear that and process that with me, it stays as a truth. Uh, another one, God, I don't think you've actually taken care of me as well as you have taken care of. That's a huge one. It all of, so those are huge statements, mm -hmm. self-entitlement statements, and you get the privilege in what you do in, in counseling and therapy. You get the permission to get behind that wire and get to, to challenge gently and gracefully the validity, uh, invalidity of those statements. But until that happens, I'm just spinning in those thoughts. So that's that's the privilege of the lover. Um, and it starts back here. I, I, I'm on a kick right now, and it's not a kick, but everywhere I go, I'm saying the statement. It is less, in, in fact, I think I have one up right now. It takes very little faith to try to prove to God that you love him. It takes immense faith to choose to receive his love. Yeah. So it is much less important to try. It's like God is saying, hey, thank you so much. And I really appreciate you trying to prove that you love me. And that that it's been, don't think I don't appreciate it. But really, will you let me love you? Mm -hmm. It's this is what so it, it, now, now extrapolate that out to human beings and our spouse, our best friends are saying, will you let me love you? I know who you are and I'm not running away. Will you let me love you? Literally, will you let me meet needs in your life? Yeah, that's for, for so many people, whether they, they, they go to counseling or don't, they, they've gone through traumatic events. The, the, the ability to receive love. Like I, I hear about God's love. I, I know it in my head. Yes. I, I know God loves you. Yes. But, but uh, the, the, so often the, the trauma from the past this uh, disables and distorts the ability to receive love. It's almost like we want to sabotage that with our trauma and say, after this has happened, never again will anyone be trusted with me. Nobody. God, God can't be trusted with me because he allowed a world where that happened. Um, it's, it's so imperative for me to understand that day in the boxcars that Jesus wasn't um, clinically watching from across the room he was there with me in a dying planet in a sick world sick things are going to happen to every single person who lives on the planet and here's his commitment is he experiences it all with me he never shies away from it he enters into it fully and maybe experiences it more than I do because I, I have the ability to medicate. He doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so wherever I am, whatever situation I'm in, he says, John, I got this and I love you so much. 
And I love you so much that I'm willing to enter into whatever that is that you're having to enter in with. I promise I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Oh, no, I, not possibly will I do that. So I'll stay right here. How he does that and then goes to a fourth grader's birthday party and laughs with them and enjoys the presents being open. I don't know. I don't get it. But it's cost me to say nobody else does that. No other human does that. And I found myself, I was down in Mexico for a couple of days with some friends. They've just become dear friends. One's 89, uh, old ex-Marine. And, and I've just fallen in love with these guys. And so sometimes we go together different places. I was in Mexico and I realized I only do it when I'm at the beach and I want to do it a lot of other places. When you're at the beach, somehow the roar of the ocean makes you private enough. And I sing to him. I just sing to him. And they're, they're a little silly, little, they don't have to rhyme. I just have, just keep it going. And if I can keep that going, I, I find myself in this, this environment where I'm, I'm getting to say the things that he's done so beautifully for me and how my life has been redeemed and how grateful I am. And I can't stop singing. I don't want to come in. I, I just want to stay there because I'm getting out. I'm verbalizing. At first, it just starts out kind of, I'm just saying God things. And then eventually it rolls into something so sacred. It's one of the vehicles for me to be able to articulate and receive experientially his love for me. Yeah. Just the, that picture, just, just the, the joy and, and the, fr the freedom. I oh. think the, 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 I, I don't think we can be brave. I don't think we can be courageous without freedom. Amen. And, and when those, those moments where um, you unashamed, uh, mm -hmm. you, you're just expressing joy and, uh, and uh, connection with God, uh, with your whole body. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it, it, you talk about courage. We can have a buck up courage that is no courage at all it's it's just pretending mm. it's it's masking it's stuffing down it's um it's saying i'm going to go on and nobody's gonna stop it i have to i cannot fail mm. i did that for so long i was telling caleb my son uh, i was talking about the death of my own brother and how at that time I just, I couldn't let my emotions, so I, I stuffed them down because I had to be successful in what I was doing. I had to be on my game. Uh, it takes more courage to let yourself be known in those weaknesses so that you can have Christ's strength live out of you. That, that's where the courage comes in. And that is a hard one for us to believe, especially self-made ones. We want to say, no, no, God, God's job is to keep the planets in order and to make my life work. But on those failure things, courage is getting up in the morning and stuffing that stuff back down. And instead, Jesus says, um, I dwell in you and I want my strength to be able to sing out through you. I know what's happened. And I love you so much. Do not hide it. Do not stuff it down. Experience it. Grieve it. With someone you trust. That, that's why, Sylvan, you, your role, the, and, and you get to hear it all the time of, I have carried this for so long. It has eaten me alive. Thank you for giving me the gift to have a place. It's amazing how many of us do not have those safe places where we feel that we can be known. That there's, there's places where that's, that's a brand new thought. 
And so it's, it's a great gift. Yeah. The, this month is mental health awareness month. And I'm glad that more Christian leaders and, and churches are awakening and, and yeah. talking more about the importance of, of safety, uh, the importance of, of being places where people can share their story, their, their, their lives. It's, it's, it's what God wanted. It's, 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 it's taught in the Bible uh, to, to, to confess yeah. our sins so that we can be healed. But uh, for so many reasons, it, it, it's difficult. And, and if you think of it with leaders, especially there's, there's some statistics that 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 statement of of the more influence I get, the more tendency I want to hide because I don't want to lose that place of position. It's told that pastors will fail morally so that they don't have to face failing in ministry. Is that bizarre? But it's true. Yeah. That, that they'll self-sabotage themselves out, but their fear of failing in ministry. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You just, you're by yourself and eventually, what is it that's not going to work? I'm going to fail at this part, fail at this part, fail at, fail at this part. Oh, but to have some colleagues who know you and know the worst and know the best about you. Uh, my, my son, Caleb, is getting to experience that right now. Um, you know, I was a pastor and there were times where I felt like I was cheating, stealing money because it was so fun. It was just so fun. I got to experience an environment of grace in a, with my elders and with my staff and with a, a drama ministry that we created called Sharky Productions. And I wouldn't give those up for the world. And, and I, I know that there's ministry all over that is not a church leadership thing, but that's what I experienced. And I did finally, uh, not early on, but eventually trusted a lot of those people with me. And I learned to speak messages that were vulnerable. I always say the, the audience knows how much vulnerability is acceptable in that community by what the pastor talks about. Yeah. If the pastor says, well, you know, sometimes I struggle with in traffic, I think uh, bad mm -hmm. thoughts about another driver. Well, then here you are hiding some moral sin thinking, well, that's never going to get to come up here. It, there has to be, uh, there are no together people. There's just us. I, I used to think there was, I think there was this Gnostic group and, 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 but as I've met them, there just aren't any. There's just people with Christ in them, actually called righteous, actually called holy, but still maturing and still carrying this dynamic called flesh. And if I could know that the power of it gets broken by me having a place, ah, oh, where I can be known, where all of me can be known. Stacy, she doesn't know all the particulars, but she knows everything about this man. And I want her to know them. And for whatever reason, that woman is not impressed with my sense of humor. She's not impressed with any of my talents, but she loves John Lynch, just loves the concept that John Lynch exists. <laughs> so there's nothing I can throw at her that's going to, well, I've decided that's enough. I don't like you anymore. What a gift that has been to this man to have a spouse where I don't, I, I, I know of a marriage right now where the, where the man says, I can never say these things about our marriage, things that are going wrong, because if I do, she's going to leave me and never look back. And so you, you have this bizarrely twisted relationship 
all based out of that fear of being known by each other. Um, so, so and so painful and so lonely. Yeah. The, the, the more successful you are at it. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah. And I, I, I was, I was mayor. I, 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 I knew that town well. Yeah. I love what you said. Um, that, that, that your wife Stacy isn't impressed by you, but loves loves you. Yes. And 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 that's one of the most humbling and helpful things about my wife Julie. And but but whether it's in marriage or just in leadership or social media, this is such an important thing uh, that I want to underline. It is that we can't equate impressing people with being loved by people. Just that's like right. what you said about the mask. That's right. And we're trying so hard to impress people we, we're, not we really, love, we're not trying to love people that, that's right even every show every podcast i have to come on and say god protect me i'm not going to be on my game sometimes sometimes i'm not going to have the right connection and to be freed from trying to impress you that i'm somebody that i'm not i i, I even i i, I want to Whenever I go to a, conf a conference, I do whatever I can, story-wise or whatever, so that um, they're not just hearing me head-wise, but they can enter in uh, to my heart because I have so much to offer if they will do that. If that can happen, I can be one of the best speakers they've had. But if they keep me here on an informational level, I'm eh. So it's... It's a, it's it's a very beautiful thing when when I know like I know here I just get to be me I don't I don't have to live up to a title I don't have to live up to a a, a book I don't have to live up to anything and if I do that I get to give a great gift with um with uh, the the rest of our time I want to ask you about the, in, in your book, you, you talk about four different chapters yes, or, or yes. seasons of your life. Yes. I, want to, I want to ask you about this, this fourth season. Um, uh, uh, yesterday, uh, my daughter and uh, son-in-law, they, they did a gender reveal party. So, yes. so, so I want to... Uh, How did uh, they do it? What did they do? They, 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 they did the, the little uh, puff of of canon of pink yes. smoke yes we're gonna, we're gonna have a granddaughter <laughs> oh that's great that's so great our first grandchild so i i want to sit with you john as and and get your grandpa wisdom yeah um and uh really uh i i i told my family this <laughs> this morning like selfishly i just want to uh learn how, how to l love my adult children better <laughs> But I don't think it's just selfish because I think so, so many listeners uh, would be would be helped by that. I, I, so I'm asking you about uh, just the, the, this chapter in your in your life. It a few years ago now uh, you you went through a, a medical crisis. Yes. And uh, yeah. So uh, just want to hear your thoughts on yeah on, on that. I Thank you. I'm still in that. I, I, I still have those health issues and I just get to say it out loud. So people know it, people can stand with me in it and, and know that sometimes I'm not going to be on my game. And sometimes my body seizes up and I go, I have no idea what I do if I have to speak tonight. Um, hmm. Thank you for saying that. And my family has, stood with me incredibly in that. I, you don't know who you marry when you first marry. Stacy was just pretty and and she was fun to be with. But you don't know when when you physically shut down what your spouse will do. And she just stayed with me. This this gregarious, adventurous, playful woman sat in a dark room with me and just stayed. And didn't ask me to be anything, didn't ask me to do anything or perform anything. She just stayed by my side. And so 
I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I know that that's not true for everyone. Um, but I think it is at the core of my being used by God, of my still being on the road, of still getting to do those things, is that uh, I'm protected. I need so much protection. If if you knew me well and lived with me, you'd go, Stacy, if she walked in here, she would say, yes, he needs so much protection. <laughs> um, but then I get to give away. I long to give away. My three children, uh, I, I always say, if if our faith isn't authentic, if if it's if it's a religious thing where I do this over here and then at church I live a different way, they see it, they smell it, and then <clears throat> they want nothing to do. As soon as they can get out of your house, they will adopt a different worldview, different lifestyle. They will accommodate and they will, um, because it makes it easier on them in the home while they're there. But if it wasn't real for them, they won't buy it. And we didn't know what we were doing and we failed a lot and hurt each other, but we always stayed present with our kids and said, this stuff is real to us. And, and I just hurt your mom, and, and, but we're not going anywhere. We love each other. So all three didn't have to run. And that, that has, now my, my daughter had a divorce and failed morally, but that's not who she is. She's, she has two grandchildren, or two children and, and a wonderful husband. That, 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 she failed, but she is probably the one who knows how to express her love to me the best. And she's a delight. She's an incredible daughter who lives this truth. One of the things I love, an environment of grace, when she came back and everybody in the world knew what she had done, she had the confidence in who Jesus was in her and in her community. We all sat up in the front row and she came up into the front row and raised her hands in worship and never had to be in the back, never had to play that game. Um, Carly is the one who probably has the most different views from me. And she has taught me how to love her. Uh, at first, it's so hard when, when, when you're not just a dad, but you're the pastor. You're, it's like, what are you doing not believing exactly the way I do? And she has beautiful beliefs. Don't get me. She uh, really, really wonderful. She is the diversity pastor up at Santa Clara University. It's a Catholic college. And she, she gets to love and do the vigils. And you know, whenever there's an issue in the community for Buddhists, for Jewish, for young life, just everything, she loves it. But I've had to learn uh, to, not, to not be the one who can win, but instead to learn my daughter and believe her and not say that this is just a phase, but to trust her and convince her that I want to know who she really is, not just how she goes. So I, I, wrote, a, I wrote a chapter on it in the book. And I'm still learning. But my daughter has believed me. And I've earned back the trust of my daughter. And it's, that's not static. It's ongoing. But Carly and I have a beautiful relationship. Uh, Caleb just got to golf with him yesterday. Uh, who do I want to be with more than Caleb? Oh, my gosh. And he's doing a better job at pastoring in every area. I, I, I still think I was funnier, but other than that, he's doing, he's killing it as a pastor. He has a, I'm just so pleased. And he's the one who taught me, like I could overreact because of unresolved issues. Like, like if he ever questioned something, I'd get up like this. And he was the one who said, who actually went into the lion's den with me and said, dad, it's okay. I know this is important to you, 
but I want you to believe I'm not your enemy. I'm standing with you and I want to protect you. Your reaction is way too big. It doesn't fit here. Mm. And I'm looking at my son going, how do you know that? What, why are you teaching wisdom to your dad? <laughs> and, and all three of my kids get to do that. They're, they're just younger. It doesn't mean that if this isn't Gnosticism, every relationship that I have, they're like Bill, he's my big brother in the faith, but there's areas where he lets me protect him, where he gets, I get to be the one to speak into his life. Otherwise, it's not real. It's just one way. I, and I that, and my that. kids have had that great gift. Yeah. I, um, I was thinking, oh, it, it's, it's a, a blessing when, when your kids are able, they have the freedom and safety to confront you um, yes. but but your word protect i i, I love that I, I love that word that protection is the gift of permission isn't it in, in a relationship where where i can say to stacy i want to i see that you can handle me in this area i see that you have wisdom in this area i think you see that you have strength in this area I want to trust you in this area to protect me. I want to give you permission. I want to let you know. And then they get to love me. And my trust of them allows them to love me. And so meeting that need is their loving me. And I'm having to do that all over the place now. And I'm not a kid anymore. And so, um, Everybody around me is is who who are my friends and my family. They watch me, and they have known they have known that relationship of protection and permission because I've gotten to protect them a ton all through their lives, and still do now. But the tables have kind of flipped a little bit. It's like Caleb, when did you become wiser? Amy, how do you know how to do this better? Carly. You're teaching me theology. When did you become smarter than me? <laughs> but I wanted that so much. I never wanted to be their cop. I never wanted to win over them because I had the power to. I wanted to earn their trust. And I thought, I'll give up everything. I will give up anything. Pastoring isn't that important to me. Writing to speaking, if it's not real with my kids, then it's just not worth doing what else, whatever else I was trying. Thank you. I think I'm, I'm realizing as I, I listen, um, so sometimes I, I listen well and, and, you know, I'm a paid professional with that. But <laughs> often I'm, I realize I'm, um, sometimes I listened well to, to get what I want. Hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. um, and that's misusing their trust and, that's and, right. and my superpower of listening it's, but you you've taught me today. I, I need to learn more. And, and I think that will help. That's them so good. That's so good. They, with, more. It, it, to, to be able to own who I am in front of them, to be able to, uh, ask them, how am I affecting you to, to be able to ask them what it is they're learning, they'll jump over a wall for you. They, they, it causes, they have an innate built-in desire to trust us, to trust their parents. And, and no amount of failure on my part is going to change that. I can mess up over and over. As long as I'm teachable, winnable, and, and don't use my role as power to defeat them, they, they I, I believe me, I've tried, I've failed in so many areas mm. and they give me permission. They, they let me back in. That, that's so, so good. What you just said about learning and here it's, it's profound. The gift that you're giving them in that. I hope uh, parents will be encouraged by what they just heard there and, and also pastors. Christian leaders. 
this this year has just been so hard um and and they've been beat up um and uh there's just so much healing uh, needed suddenly the pastor became the lightning rod for all the political dissension and what why don't you say something about this you need to say something about this and this person who is going along loving god and speaking the gospel is now suddenly like you said the lightning rod for all of our stuff all the parishioners in the world all their mess that got agitated and inflamed during this last season so they're a trustworthy pastor is like a hero it's like a true living hero who who needs to be honored in so much because they're they're still just patching things up from this last year yeah yeah well uh as we wind down our time for today john uh, just thank you again so much for uh you the your your honesty and 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 your 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 courage to yeah. to share thank your you. your your life um any uh last thoughts uh for for today yeah um one of the reasons i wrote on my worst day was i think i had a voice early on when i uh started trusting Jesus and I started preaching and I started to be someone important. And I had this voice that, 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 that he was not pleased with me. That it was almost a voice that, Hey, funny boy, they liked you today. Didn't they? You know, someone who wasn't taken in me and I'm going to have exposure. I'm going to have to expose. And I, and I didn't even know what he was going to expose me. And I thought that's how God talked to me. Mm. And he doesn't ever. It, I can always know it's a made up voice when there's any condemnation, when there's any shame, when things come at me in bunches that I can't do it, whenever it's anxiety producing, whenever it's frightening, mm. God never comes to me like that. He is so for me. And so I wrote almost in every every piece in the book, I wrote his voice the way I imagined him speaking to me. Because you've got the one place in Matthew, Matthew 11, the only place where he says what he's like character-wise. And he says, I'm humble and I'm kind. And, and he's always your biggest fan. He's never, is there a time of saying, I'm gonna have to hit him with a two by four. I'm gonna have to break that guy and just, I'll tell you what, never. That's just not him. And I can believe that and rest in that and know that I'm not alone in this. It takes away, it actually can take away some forms of depression and takes away some forms of anxiety to where I feel like I'm never going to be enough. He says, I, other places I understand, but with me, you're more than enough. The one that really matters says you are more yeah. for for listeners what what john just shared that that that's why i share uh have shared his previous books and now uh, on my worst day um and that's it's going to be available on uh, audiobook uh, yes soon. yeah yes we've had a glitch with it and now it has been corrected. And so anybody who it, it was missing a chapter in the audiobook, and all you have to do is delete it now, re re-upload it, and you've got that chapter that's missing. It's one of the most important chapters in the book. But anyone who buys it now, that chapter's in there. All the chapters are there. Um be, besides the audiobook, what what's next for you? Sometimes I never know. It's it's opportunity wise. I there's been talk of me getting to make a series of fifteen minute uh, kind of legacy films of acting some things out, some of the things that I think I do best, and just say, look, I may not get forever to do this, so I want to make sure these truths get out. And so there's been a lot of talk about this. 
I'm meeting with Christianity Today, which beautiful, the head of their entire um, products line and resource line, they're saying, we would like to do some videos and materials with you. So I'm going, sure, sure, why not? But I always also want to do this, do what we're doing right here. If this is like I get one ride to get to do this and it's beautiful. It's, it's like I say, when I go out in public and, and I have books and I get to sign them, I, 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 I write way too much because I'm going, I, I just get this little window of time to get to do this. And so it's very sacred to me. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna continue doing what I'm doing ongoing, creating those shorter videos that you see every couple of weeks and, and some, some of those uh, one-liners, two-liners that, that hopefully are wisdom for people in going through parenting, going through depression, going through whatever subject that is. And then I'm still on the road. I, I love that. I adore getting to come into a community where I've never been before and try to bring an environment of grace and let people try that on. So that's that's still my favorite thing. I don't know about a next writing project yet. I've got one in my heart of uh, on my best day. Uh, and I want that to be more of a teaching book, but uh, I think that's a little bit down the road. That's wonderful. The, uh, I look forward to the, those legacy videos. You, you are leaving a legacy in um, your, your, your words, your, your, your teaching on, on grace colors every interaction that I have. With the people I work with. That's so I can't wait to hang out with you. Every now and then we'll see each other at an event, but we're there for two minutes with each other. And I just can't wait just to hang out with you and to, to be with someone who who is risking and embracing those truths that sometimes are the minority voice, but they're all over the gospel. Uh, they they it is just profound for me. And I just want to hang out with such an audience. Would, would love that. Some, someday. Someday, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I used to be in the Pacific Northwest, True Face. We used to be up there all the time. But now I'm, for some reason, I'm in the South and Texas and Southeast and never, never in the Northeast. Nobody ever has me in the Northeast. I don't know what my problem is, but someone in in Vermont, would you just let me come up there? If, if we have a listener anywhere, Maine, I'd go to Maine for sure in the winter. You, you gotta get a lobster roll up there. You gotta get a lobster roll. Yes. I've had one before, but I mean, as a speaker, then my career's done. Then I know I'm near the end. <laughs> Thank you so much, John, for, oh, for my, joining uh, me today. What an absolute honor. Father God, I just want to thank you. This it just uh, out of out of out of my heart just explodes. This is so fun. This is so fun and such a delight to get to be in a setting uh, like this. Thank you for this time with so long. Father, use this in whatever way you'd like. We, we just we just receive your love. Amen. Amen. Amen.